Decontamination is the job of cleaning up or making harmless chemical agents, such as mustard gas and lewisite. These are liquid chemicals called vesicants or skin blistering agents. They are used in several ways. They can be sprayed by airplanes. They can be scattered by artillery shells. Or they can be spread by landmines. The purpose of these attacks is to cause casualties and slow the advance of our troops. Mustard and lewisite may remain on leaves and grass for days or even weeks at a time. And if they aren't cleaned up at once, they can easily cause many casualties. Every regiment or battalion ordinarily has a small unit especially trained in decontamination. This group works under the supervision of the unit gas officer and his NCOs. As a precaution, each man of the unit has a complete outfit of clothing which has been specially treated to protect him from mustard and lewisite. This allows the men to carry out their work with safety. The clothing is made up of a two-piece suit of cotton underwear and socks. a shirt and a pair of trousers which have been modified for better protection, and shoes and leggings which have also been especially treated to resist mustard and lewisite. In adjusting the hood, the men work in pairs. The hood is buttoned to the back of the shirt and left hanging until the contaminated area is reached. Masks are carried in the usual way. The hands are then covered with protective cotton gloves. Masks and hoods are not put on until the detail is near the gassed area. Complete equipment for the work is carried in a truck or trailer, one unit being provided for each battalion. Equipment and materials are made up of such items as shovels, axes, brooms, buckets, sprays, chlorinated lime and non-corrosive agent. First, a careful survey is made by the unit gas officer. He wears his mask and protective clothing for the job. He determines whether or not the area can be cleaned up immediately. In some cases, the area may be too large. However, all contaminated areas are marked, and when necessary, detours are indicated on the map. With this information, the officer returns to the leaders of the detail. And after showing them the area which must be decontaminated, and explaining how this must be carried out, he orders them to begin at once. At a safe distance from the gassed area, the truck stops to allow the men to put on gas masks and adjust their hoods. Then the men move into the contaminated area. These shell holes and the area around them must be cleaned up before the road can be used by troops. A 75 millimeter shell will contaminate an area of 28 square yards. The 105 millimeter shell will affect an area of 79 square yards. The 4.2 inch mortar will contaminate 113 square yards. The 155 millimeter shell will contaminate 177 square yards. Before any work is begun, a sign is posted to warn advancing troops of the danger. 
It should be placed in a spot where it can easily be seen. This sign gives the type of gas and the date of posting. When all men have checked their masks and clothing, detailed orders are given so that the work can be done quickly and thoroughly. The leader of the detail checks the wind direction and orders the men to work on the upwind side so that dangerous vapors may be avoided as much as possible. Each of these shell holes represents a different problem in decontamination and they will be handled in a different way. Each man gets the tools he needs to do the job that has been assigned to him. The work is started by cutting away all surrounding brush and overhanging branches, which then must be burned. Kerosene should be used to speed up the burning of green brush and leaves. All burning should be done downwind so that the vapors given off by the heat will not blow on the men at work. In this case, the decontamination material used is chlorinated lime. When there are pools of liquid chemical present, the lime must be mixed with earth. However, if chlorinated lime is not available, earth alone can be used. This will cover the chemical agents, but will not neutralize them as does chlorinated lime. Three shovels of earth to two shovels of lime is about the right mixture. Adding earth like this slows down the chemical action of the lime. If chlorinated lime alone is put on liquid mustard, a violent reaction and flame will result, and heavy, dangerous fumes will be carried downwind. Therefore, in decontaminating any area where there is mustard in liquid form, the chlorinated lime must be mixed with earth. When there are no large pools of liquid agent present, chlorinated lime may be used directly without mixing it with earth. But every precaution should be taken by using long-handled shovels and by remaining upwind. When it can safely be used, this method saves the time of mixing the lime with earth. When the work is finished, a special detector material is used to see that no chemical agents remain. In this case, shavings are chipped from a detector crayon and allowed to fall on the ground. The crayon is orange-red, but rapidly turns blue if mustard or lewisite is present. If it retains its original color, as it does here, the area is safe. A detector paper can also be used. This paper is green, but it becomes red if there is mustard or lewisite present. After decontamination, the shell hole areas are covered with earth and brush in order to cover all traces of white. This is done so that the areas won't be seen from the air. In an area such as this, which is too large for immediate decontamination, no work will be attempted. However, a warning sign must be posted.
Every unit should include several men to act as sentries. The sentry, after being given detailed instructions, is left to warn advancing troops to detour the area. Different conditions require different ways of decontamination. For example, here is a bridge which our troops must use. It is spattered with pools of liquid agent, and these must be either decontaminated or removed. First, the NCO orders a warning sign to be posted in the road. The detail is then told which procedure is to be used. When liquid gases have been splashed on hard surfaces, water will remove most of them. Thus, in this case, water is used. The contaminated area is scrubbed thoroughly to wash away all traces of the chemical. Here, water is very effective because there is good drainage. Most liquid chemical agents are heavier than water and will remain at the bottom of any pools caused by drainage. The water then forms a seal and very slowly decomposes mustard. However, in the case of lewisite, the reaction is more rapid. The water changes it into a white vesicant solid, which must be covered with a layer of earth or ashes, for it can still cause burns by contact. When there is no drainage, a contaminated road can be swabbed with a slurry of bleach of about equal parts by weight of water and chlorinated lime. When water is not available, hard surface roads that have been contaminated with liquid agents are covered with a layer of earth. This does not destroy the agent, but smothers the vapor and keeps it from coming in contact with the troops. When it is necessary to pass through a contaminated area, such as this, still another procedure is used. The grass is sprayed with oil and then burned. This destroys all trace of dangerous chemical agents. This can also be done very quickly by using flamethrowers, if they are available. When heavy brush is contaminated, it is cut away and burned. Always remember this, details must stay upwind of any burning operation, as the hot vapors from the chemical agent are very dangerous. Wherever fire is used, there is always danger it may spread and get out of control. Therefore, each unit should have the necessary tools to put out fires and prevent them from spreading. When it is necessary to use buildings which have been splashed with vesicant, they must also be cleaned. In the case of this command post, decontamination is accomplished by scrubbing it with a slurry of chlorinated lime. This slurry may also be sprayed from an easily carried three gallon apparatus. In rear areas, a 400 gallon apparatus may be used. After all the work on the line of march has been finished, the men rejoin their unit. And as the troops march into the decontaminated areas, the truck and detail accompany them by bounds.
Sometimes it is impossible for troops to avoid contact with chemical agents. When, for instance, troops are attacked with gas from an airplane, they must lose no time in adjusting their masks and protective clothing and moving upwind of the dangerous spray. The men must be careful as they go upwind not to brush against vegetation, since chemical liquids will transfer from leaves to clothing. After getting out of the gassed area, the troops are inspected. Here is a mustard stain on the sleeve. Such clothing must be removed at once, before the mustard can soak through. Protective ointment is applied to the skin, even if it is not certain that the liquid is penetrated through the clothing. This is done immediately. Never wait for signs of burns. While first aid measures are being taken, men of the decontamination detail spread a mixture of chlorinated lime and earth over the road. The men shuffle their feet in this mixture to neutralize any mustard on their shoes. Later, a stiff brush is used to remove the chlorinated lime and earth, which is injurious to leather if allowed to remain. If the mission is urgent, the unit quickly reforms after applying first aid and moves on, continuing on the upwind side of the contaminated area. At the first chance where time permits and materials are available, the troops must thoroughly clean their clothing and equipment. The detail collects the clothes for airing or decontamination. A bath with plenty of water and soap is the first step. Hot water is preferable, but not essential. This is followed by a change of clothes, if available. If clothing has been lightly contaminated, it should be aired well. When splashed with liquid or otherwise heavily contaminated, clothing should be soaked in soapy water. Cold or lukewarm water should be used, as hot water destroys the protective qualities in the material. After soaking, the clothes should always be rinsed thoroughly. They are then hung out to dry. Decontamination, quickly and properly carried out, will enable our troops to advance with speed and safety. <laughs>